Okay, let's start with standing warm ups. All right, middle fingers, inhale up, reach, hold the breath in and lean back. Oh, and then exhale down to the floor. Get as low as you can. Get your head all the way down. This is stretching your hamstrings. Maybe the music's still a little too loud. You need to hear me. I hope you can still hear me with the music. So we're hanging out together. We're just all hanging out together. Um, get as low as you can for that lower back and the hamstrings. And then we'll do the elephant trunk. Swing it to the right. Woo! This is the elephant trunk, and it's such a nice warm up because it's pulling up one side of your spine. And get your head all the way down, side to side. Okay, slowly inhaling, coming up standing. Okay, let's put our hands on our hips, and we're going to do a little balance now. Get really grounded on one foot with your hips and shoulders perpendicular to the floor. Bend your knee a little. And we'll do toe points. And then with a knee bent, we'll do ankle rolls. A big circle with a big toe, both directions. Okay, let's do the other side. Get really grounded. Toe points. And then ankle rolls, both directions. And some wrist rolls, some finger bends. Now we'll do the arm swings. Bend the knees a little bit and flatten out your lower back with your pelvis. Your navel goes in. This is called the Tai Chi Master, we call it. And these are the horizontal arm swings. So keep breathing and swing out your arms. This is so good for our shoulders. Nice deep breaths. The arm across the chest bends at the elbow. Swing them out. We hold a lot of tension in these shoulders. Okay, now we're going to do the vertical circle. Still in the Tai Chi Master. Flat out the lower back. And this one, you make a loud sound as the air comes through your nasal passage. So you can really elongate the inhale and exhale just through the nose. So inhale up. Very slow. Very wide. Very loud. Uh, breath in the circles. Let's do another one. As wide as you can make it. And one more. Let's go the other direction. Exhale down. Another. And one more. And the shoulders forward. Inhale, the shoulders go backward. Exhale, forward. Inhale, backwards. Okay, then um, pushing down on your shoulders, stretch your neck to the side. Stretching those neck tendons and ligaments. And then the other side. Keep the shoulders down. And then down to the front, side to side. Note your fingertips. Wipe the heat and stress out of your forehead and your eyes. Keep breathing, just pulling from the center to the sides of your forehead and eyes. And then let's do the medulla oblongata up underneath the skull bone. With your fingertips, you're doing circles with your fingertips up underneath the skull bone. Both directions. This is where all the nerves originate in the fetus from that one point. It's some called the seat of the ego. So you are you're massaging your ego right now, but in a good way. <clears throat> so massage, do circles both directions. It's a good spot, yoga massage for every day. Now let's do the, uh, the neck 
this is a kind of a qigong movement now where uh, the elbow's up really high and you're really squeezing your neck, the top, the middle, the bottom. Keep breathing. Really massage your neck. You get it. And now let's do the other arm. The other hand. Ooh, really find it. Lower neck, middle neck, top of the neck. Keep breathing. All right, you can do some uh, shoulder roll both directions. And another little Qigong thing, one arm up, one hand down, and you switch them. It's called twist the rope. We're twisting the rope. I don't get a whole lot out of it. Um, let's do our last warm up, which is the elbow circle. So one foot in front, put your fingers on the shoulders, very slowly inhaling up through your nose and exhale down. Loud breath, slow, wide circle. Oh, I love this one. One more. Okay, switch the foot in front. And let's go the other direction. Inhale up. And exhale down. As wide as you can make it. And one more. And then with some figure eights with the arms. And we just finished the warm ups, which means now we can do some yoga asanas. Um, this is a routine that we developed over many, many years at the university. And we're going to do um, an intro uh, routine. You add to it as the semester goes on. So normally we'll do the, um, the triangle hand to foot, but today we're going to do Padhasana, hand to foot, classical asana, feet are shoulder width apart, inhale up, let's exhale the left side, and you're looking forward, but your upper arm is kind of arcing those upper vertebrae, and then exhale, or inhale up, and exhale the other side. Let your head and neck go. Arc your upper vertebrae. Inhale up. All right. Exhale down to the front. And then very slowly inhaling all the way up. Hold the breath in and lean back. Exhale down to the front. Okay, let's grab onto our elbows and just rock side to side. Let's widen up the legs a little bit more into the triangle pose. And you're all the way down with your head. Back through your head, up and down, side to side. Keep breathing. Grab onto your elbows and just rock side to side. Now, while we're down here, we're going to do our first twist. So put your left hand on your right foot. And look up at the other hand at the ceiling and keep breathing. In fact, try to maximize the twist in your back. But keep breathing. Keep oxygenating your blood for those nerve channels and plexi in your back. Okay, let's do the other side. Right hand on the left foot. Keep breathing. You know, all the twists to keep breathing. And back to the center. Now let's put our hands on the floor and inhale as the right leg goes out behind you. Look up. Then exhale, let the other leg go back there. And this is the inclined plank or the plank. If you're so inclined, let's do the side plank. So inhale, we'll do the side. Now this is really good for your core muscles. And then exhale back to the inclined plank. Inhale the other side. Exhale, incline plane. Now we're going to do a Tibetan cobra. So you're still staying on your toes. Exhale down and inhale up into a cobra. 
Put it on your toes. Squeeze your bottom. Look up. Exhale. We'll go into the mountain or the downward dog. You can take a little break here. Keep breathing. Try to arch downward. Okay, now let's inhale. Take the right foot up to the ceiling. Oh, wait. We don't have to do all this in this session. Now, let's not do all this. So let's just do another Tibetan cobra. Still mountain. Take another deep breath. Well, since we lifted the yellow one off, it's... <laughs> okay, let's walk our hands back to our feet. And slowly inhale coming up. Later, in the, put your hands above your heart. Nice, slow, deep, diaphragmatic breathing. Move the rock side to side. Diaphragmatic breathing. We've eliminated a few of the routine, uh, which, you know, you can add later. All right. Let's do a few more standing yoga asanas, and then we'll uh, sit down. So let's do a balance pose. There are many, many, many balance poses, none of which I'm very good at. Um, but I like doing a spiritual warrior. Um, get really grounded, bend your knee, lower your center of gravity, uh, feel like roots are coming off the toes and heel, come off one foot, and um, you can keep your hands here, you can have both out or together, or you can even hold your hips easy down pose. Slowly inhaling up parallel to the floor. And exhale down. Takes a nice deep diaphragmatic breath as you get grounded on the other foot. Inhale up, parallel to the floor, eyes focused, minds internalized. And exhale down. Slow, deep, diaphragmatic breathing, rocking side to side. Uh, Nataraj Asana, the King Dancer, is another great one. Some call it the Kapu Tree. Um, there's a lot of balance poses. Um, and the ultimate standing yoga asana is called Karmasana, which I do not recommend in the beginning of a semester. You block your hands, inhale, exhale, one side, but your head and neck arc to the side. And inhale up and exhale the other side, really arcing your vertebrae. And inhale up, and this is the best part. Exhale down, straight arms come up and over the top as far as you can. Now, a lot of people are really tight in their shoulders and aren't able to do this. And then slowly inhaling up, very slow inhale. And you can take an extra breath or hold the breath in, lean back. Exhale down. And grab onto your elbows and rock side to side. And get your head all the way down, up and down with your head. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Okay, let's sit. Now, I want to say something about that asana just then. I'm going to fix the camera because we're going to do sitting poses now. Uh, and while I'm yakking away, you could be doing the butterfly. Now, on that last yoga asana called karmasana, the karma pose, which is like my favorite. It's really good for the shoulders, so many things. But um, it's kind of a serious yoga asana for beginners especially. And people always come up too fast. Don't breathe really slow. So we could take an extra breath there. And if you come up fast, you get really, you'll lose, um, you can pass out. And in fact, this happened for me when I used to teach at uh, the, the prison as a service project, not as an inmate. 
Um, and they would do that on purpose so they'd pass out because they couldn't get drugs and they liked the experience. So it's dangerous, so be careful. Okay, let's do head to knee. One side at a time. Women put their foot along the thigh. Men put their heel up and under for that prostate pressure point. And then inhale up over your bent knee. Then exhale, bending from your lower back. Try to line up your torso with your leg. All the air is out. If you're good, I mean, eventually you'll even get your navel down to your thigh. And let your hands fall on the floor as you slowly inhale, coming up one vertebrae at a time. Hold the breath in as the other leg goes out. Exhale as the other foot comes in. Inhale up over the bent knee. And exhale down. Now in classical yoga, the contraction, you hold about six, eight seconds. And then let the hands fall, inhaling, coming up slowly. Hold the breath in as the other leg goes out. Exhale as the other foot comes in. And inhale up over the bent knee. So you want to inhale with the expansion and exhale with the contraction. And then slowly inhale coming up. Hold the breath in as the other leg goes out. Exhale as the other foot comes in. Inhale up over the bent knee. And exhale down. Just grab on as far as you can. And then maybe a little further every time. The point of comfort and then a little further. And slowly inhale and coming up. Let's do one more. Hold the breath in. Then exhale as the foot comes in. And inhale up over the bent knee. So these asanas are a nice slow process. And slowly inhale and coming up. Hold the breath in, let the other leg go out. Exhale as the other foot comes in. So really nice, smooth motion, smooth breath. And exhale down. And slowly inhaling, coming down. All right, well, that was three. If this is in your personal routine, you'd do four of them. And since that was a major forward bend, let's do a backward bend of a yoga style cobra. We did the Tibetan cobra earlier. So let's get on our front sides, palms down underneath your shoulders. Take a deep inhale and exhale your forehead down to the floor. Then very slowly inhaling, just curling upwards, just using your neck and back muscles. Come off your hands and feet, legs. Then prop yourself up with your hands. Pinch your shoulder blades together. Squeeze your bottom. You can stretch your neck. And exhale, come down one bit at a time. Now take some really deep breaths and shoot it out. This is a real lung cleaner, too. This has a lot to do with your upper chest cavity. Let's do one more. Slowly inhaling up. Pinch your shoulder blades together. Swaying cobra. See if you can keep your navel on the floor and still work up. And exhaling down. Deep breaths. Okay, let's come up on our elbows. I'll do the thigh stretch. Ooh. That's, that's not the mantra that goes with this one, but that's the mantra that comes out quite often. 
So one arm, the forearm's coming across, and then grab onto the other leg. We keep breathing in this one. Now, the more advanced class, we do the naokas in our boat or bow, where you inhale up just like the cobra. But uh, let's not do that. So let's capsize your boat, roll onto your back. Because that one's kind of major, actually. Um, it's great. But not, not the beginning of the semester. And really, our yoga is more the body and the mind and the spirit. Not so much the physical yoga you can get anywhere. Let's start now with the bellows pose. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, you bring the right knee up, grab onto it, and squeeze it down to the chest, squeezing all the air out of your lungs. Inhale, let the leg go straight to the floor. And exhale, the other knee up. Squeeze it down, squeezing the air out. <laughs> Sometimes the air can come out the other end, too. That's why we have incense. The inhale, expansion. And then exhale, both knees up. And you can rock side to side, massaging your lower back at the floor. And then inhale, expansion of the arms and legs. And let's do another one. Exhale, first knee. Inhale, expansion. Exhale, the other knee. This is one you do in bed even before you get out in the morning. You can do several of these. Inhale, expansion. Exhale, both knees up. Rocking side to side, massaging the lower back. Then inhale, expansion of the arms and legs. And that's got that. Um, uh, let's do the easy bridge. So knees up, feet flat on the floor, and your palms are down at your sides. And... Um, Slowly inhaling, start curling upwards one vertebrae at a time. And here we are up on our shoulders. And then exhaling, you come down one vertebrae at a time because they stick together in twos or threes. So you're exhaling and you're even massaging and isolating each vertebrae, curling down into the floor. And let's do that again. Inhale up. And then exhale down, really working on each vertebrae. Um, there's so many different yoga asanas, and we're just going to do a few. Let's uh, also for the spinal column health, let's do another twist. Uh, not the yoga style one, but a twist nonetheless. With your arm stretch out to the sides, the right leg goes straight. Bring up the left knee and let the left knee go down to the right side of the floor. Now keep breathing, keep your shoulders flat, and turn your head to the opposite side. And with your right hand, you can grab onto your left knee and kind of pull it down. Now keep breathing, you want to keep oxygen in your blood, which is irrigating your nerve channels, irrigating your nerve flat side. Keep breathing. And then let's come back to the center. Now switch knees. Take the right knee down to the left side forward. Turn your head the other direction, shoulders flat. Keep breathing. Come back to the center. And let's bring both knees up together. And take both knees down to the first side together. Now if you have room, you can Straighten out your legs. You grab onto your toes with your hand up there. Now keep breathing. This is a different, different twist, but it's so good for the back. You hold so much tension in these back muscles that pull our vertebrae out of alignment. And then bend your knees and take them both to the other side. If you want, you can straighten out your legs or not. Turn your head the other direction. Shoulders flat. Keep breathing. Then 
you bend your knees and come back to the center. Now, um, there's a yoga exercise for the brain. Uh, we call it the crossover knee rotations. So you cup your palms over your kneecaps, but the opposite way. So your arms are crossed over. You do one knee down and one away from you. So one arm's bent, one elbow's bent, and the other one's straight. One up and one down. This is because the hemispheres of the brain, left and right, they cross over and control the opposite side of the body. Keep breathing just one up and one down. One up and one down. Now this is supposed to alleviate confusion from your life. And then you go to the outside and you pass each other back to the inside and you pass each other. Some of you are very confused right now. Just work out one up and one down. And you can switch whatever hands on top and reverse the circle. Say your name backwards. Now, the, the thing is, one up and one down and just work out. This is a really good crossover pattern for our brain and neural pathways. All right. Uh, while we're up here with our knees, let's do the uh, thread the needle. So um, let's bring the left ankle onto the right thigh. And then with your left hand, you thread the needle between your two thighs. And you grab onto your right knee with your two hands. Or if you can't reach that part underneath the knee. And then just pull them with your hands, kind of lifting your tailbone off the floor. Pulsing. This is uh, the sciatic muscle, the sciatic nerve, the hamstring. All right, let's do the other side. Right hand on the left thigh. Thread the needle with your right hand, grab on, and pull. Keep breathing. We intermix a lot of these exercises between the actual classical yoga asanas. Um, Okay, let's lay flat. Um, and let's, uh, let, yeah, let's lay flat. Bring up the left knee. And then roll all the way over onto your right side. And then with your left hand, you push yourself up onto your right elbow. And this one's called sitting up, but in a really nice, relaxed way instead of jerking up. Okay, let's get on our hands and knees. And we'll do a few of these now. So you want your hands uh, below your shoulders. Um, make your spinal column really parallel to the floor. Pinch your shoulder blades together. Inhale, look up. And then exhale, round your shoulder blades, round your back, and suck your whole abdomen up underneath your rib cage, all the ears out. Squeezing those abs, and then inhale, pinch your shoulder blades together, look up, tailbone up, exhale, and uh, all the ears out, round your back, and bring your whole abdomen up underneath your rib cage. See if you can isolate one side, the other side, and then inhale. They call that the cat cow. Um, but there's another cat that we enjoy a lot. Uh, take a deep inhale. Exhale, bring your right knee to the nose. And inhale, let the right leg go up behind you. And come off your left hand, the opposite side hand. Look up. This is the cat. That's the mantra. And exhale down. Notice this is the same crossover pattern that we're doing before. Take a deep inhale. Exhale the left knee to the nose. And inhale up with the left leg. And come off the right arm. Exhale down. <clears throat> All right, let's do one more. This one's called the cool cat, which um, you don't have to do. You're cool enough, but... Um, it, it might be a little extreme, but take a deep inhale. Exhale the right knee to the nose. And then inhale up, or instead, turn your leg to the side. With your left hand, you grab onto your ankle down here at the floor. 
Then inhale up. Wow. Exhale down. It's wonderful, but, um, you know, everyone at their own pace. Take a, let's do the other side. Take a deep inhale. Exhale the left knee to the nose. Inhale up, or you turn it to the side and grab out your right hand. Then inhale up. Exhale down. Now there's a hundred other ones that you can do on your knees here like this. There's a dog at the fire hydrant. Um, um, there's, uh, well, we can do some of, um, you stick your leg out. Um, or you can bring your leg up here and then so I'll say this is your right leg right foot in your right hand inhale up with the left hand and this is a twist and then exhale down underneath let's do the other side inhale up exhale down these are all really fun um, like I said, there's so many of them, um, but we, we did the important things, the shoulder blade pinch, the abdomen uh, lift, the Udayana mudra when they do it standing up. Let's, uh, let's squat. See if you can do the flat-footed fetal squat where you get really, really small. Now, this is really difficult for a lot of people because we grew up with furniture. Even though throughout history, human beings spent most of their time squatting around. Um, the V squat should be a lot easier with your feet and knees going out in the V, the feet are pretty far apart, and your whole torso is in the middle. And this is a yoga asana. And you can bounce your body, kind of cruising around. Um, and then there's one that we call the uh, Tibetan toe squats um, where your heels your heels are together and you balance this is another yoga asana now they like the om in Tibet Um, but in yoga, we don't usually um, mm -hmm. that sound. Now, this is the oh, this is the advanced class. Um, Yanasana, sharpen the intellect. But I, I won't do this at the beginning of the semester. And this is even more advanced. And then the really advanced. So when we bring up the other foot and we just hover over the floor. All right. Well, let me make sure I'm on the right page. Well, Yeah, let's do the half pigeon. That's a nice one people like. Um, and then we'll get on our backs. And then we'll do the last few. So we've been doing this for about a half an hour now. Uh, the half pigeon is it's good. Um, the back leg is, front side of the leg is down. The front leg knee to the calf is a 90 degree angle. The knee is a 90 degree angle. If it's less, you're not going to feel anything. You have to feel squat. Um, and this is already really difficult for a lot of people to be way up here like this. And then you slowly lower yourself down over your calf. This is called a half pigeon. And you'll feel what that's doing in your 
sciatic muscle in your hamstring, etc. Let's do the other side. The leg behind you is front side down. And you slowly lower yourself to the point of comfort. Keep breathing. And half pigeon. Um, I hope I didn't forget. I know we're eliminating some of the more difficult ones, but uh, yeah, let's lay on our backs now. Um, now, this is where in a more advanced class, you do shoulder stand fish, shoulder stand fish. Um, but for the general public, I don't know about that. It's, you know, diet, etc. Uh, but just laying like this and doing the strengthening the abdomen. So let's uh, do a few of those. Take a deep inhale, lift the feet off the floor, tensing those abdomen muscles, and then you can do the side to side scissors. Oh, I hate these. And then with the ankles together, you do a big circle with the breath. Inhale down, exhale up. And let's go the other direction. Inhale, right to the floor, and then exhale, coming up. You can do a few of those. Um, but then we got the vertical scissors. Exhale, or inhale, and take that leg almost to the floor, really tensing. And if you can bend your knee here, oh, feel that, then exhale. Um, this is strengthening your glutes and your abs. Let's do the other leg. In the inhale, and not to the floor, but straight leg, and even bend your knee towards you. Oh my God, and then back. <coughs> and there's just vertical scissors. There's so many different ones that are abdomen strengthers. In our yoga classes, we don't concentrate as much on the muscles as we are on the glands, the hormones factories that are affecting the mind. But these core muscles are really important for posture and, and so many things. So um, now is when we usually do the shoulder stand. I teach people to push against the floor and roll like a ball and then grab your back and keep your eyes focused at the space between the two big toes and get as tall as you can, but you shouldn't talk in this position, it's not good for the boys. And then shake them out by kicking up and kicking down. This is cleaning out your legs. And you can uh, do splits and twists and ankle rolls. And then you bring the knees down to the ears. And you come down one vertebrae at a time. You hold your back or you hold the floor, or you hold your toes with all your weight on each vertebrae. Slowly, try not to flop down. This is when you usually hear people flop, flop, flop all through the class. Now, like I said, I don't recommend the shoulder stand for a while. Um, and then the fish is usually in the full lotus, but there's an easy fish where you lift your butt, your knees are up, you lift up your bottom, put your palms down underneath your bottom, and straighten out your legs, and then you inhale, you come up onto your elbows. You get the top of your head into the floor, so now your neck is going to stretch in the opposite way, it was squeezed in the shoulder stand, which is a great massage for the thyroid and the parathyroid glands in the neck. Uh, you just keep breathing in this one. You can spread your elbows. Get, and just imagine your breath coming through your gills on the sides of your neck. Now, I don't know what a noise fish make. That's a whale. Those are mammals. Uh, and then back onto your elbows and come on down. So, we just did a shoulder stand in the fish, which I don't recommend. But after doing some of these abdomen and glute strengtheners, it's, this is a really nice one. We call it rock and roll, where you bring your knees up, go between your two knees with your two fingers, grab onto your two big toes. Rock and roll is massaging your back, using your weight against the floor. 
Go all the way up one side and down the other side. Keep breathing. Find the sore spots. And really get it. Wherever you need it. Be your own masseuse of gravity. And then, with your knees bent, cup your hands over your knees and keep your knees together. Go in the other direction. And, uh, okay, and then it's lay flat. Bring up the left knee and roll to the right side. And with your left hand, push yourself up onto your elbow. Come on up sitting. Our last three yoga asanas um, is the long bowing pose. That's known as yoga pose. Now, this is really good for women, but also good for men. You can sit on your toes backward or forward on the knuckles of your toes. Inhale up. And then exhale down as straight as you can keep your torso and arms until your hands hit. And then you're sitting. Elongate your spine. All the air is out. And then you inhale up as straight as you can keep your arms and torso. And exhale. Again. Exhale down. Then inhale up as straight as you can. See, this is really... Powering up your lower back and those ovaries in that. Then, in the sitting posture, again, this one's kind of major. It's a cow's head, the mukasana. This one's really good for men, but also for women. You tuck your heels up, knees are on top of each other for women. Men, if you want to try, you sit up on your ankle or your heel. Whenever knee is up, same side arm goes under, opposite side goes over. And you try to work them together where you lower a sock or a belt. And you men kind of push up with their heel and keep breathing in this one. Try to get the elbow behind the head. And the mantra. I don't know what I'm saying in cow, but we just have fun with yoga. And then exhale, release it. Now let's switch whatever knees on top. This is one that's probably not going to be in your routine for some time. Whatever knees up, same side arm, under, opposite side over. Try to work them together or lower a belt or a sock. And keep breathing. And release. Um, we're almost at 45 minutes, which is what I wanted to keep the routine, but I added a few that are not in the routine. Our last asanas are awesome, probably the most important for the brain. The pineal gland and the pituitary gland. Shashangasana, the, the rabbit or hare pose, and the child pose. So again, you're up on your toes, um, one way or the other. Um, then take a deep inhale and exhale your forehead as close as you can get it to your knees and your palms are up at your feet. So now you can lift your bottom up and down so you get more onto the top of your head if your forehead is not that close to your knees. And your arms and shoulders are hanging down gravity. Now just laying in this position is really good for the brain and the pineal gland because the blood circulation is going to the top of the brain. But then we grab onto our heels. And with an inhale, your bottom goes up in the air and you roll onto the top of your head. And you keep trying to go forward with your bottom, but your arms won't let you. They're like chains pulling on those upper back muscles because you keep trying to go forward with your bottom. And then exhale, flop down. And inhale, come up sitting. Now we pull a lot of tension. These muscles get so tight, they restrict the blood circulation to the brain, causing migraines and headaches. And people have cured themselves, even from migraines, from just doing this yoga asana. Not when they're having the migraine, but in their daily routine. Let's do one more. Exhale down. 
Go around to your heels. Inhale up. And you're pulling on the upper back muscles, which restrict the blood to the brain. Exhale, flop down. Inhale, come up. And now we can sit between the heels, so much more comfortable. And put the forehead on the floor. This is the child's pose. Because now the blood is coming more to the frontal lobes and the pituitary gland, which is very active in children with the growth of the body. Another variation of this one, the knees can be wide or women like it this way more, and the arms above the head. Either way, the head's down, the blood circulation is coming to the frontal lobe and pituitary. All right. Now, that was our yoga session. It's important after a, a nice thorough session like that, especially to do massage afterwards. Let's start with the forehead, pulling from the center to the sides, again and again over the forehead and eyes. Keep breathing. Now squeeze and pinch the skin between the eyebrows, and then the eyebrows from the center to the sides, again and again, important stress points in the eyebrows. So keep breathing in the eyebrows. And then charge up the hands with some inhale, and then exhale, some magnetism, and then cup the palms over your eyes, absorbing all the heat and stress, like a healing energy of your hands. And then let the hands slide down the face just till the thumbs lock in up underneath the ears, and you massage down along that jawbone again and again for the lymph nodes, which are real important for draining infections out of the head. And then bring your hands further down and massaging the base of the nostrils and over your whole face. Now let's do the ears. So you're squeezing your upper ears, pinching on down the outer ridge of the ears, grabbing onto the ear lobes, twisting on both directions. And then when you pull down for the inner ear, you stick out your jaw, you stick out your tongue, you exhale and focus your eyes at the tip of your nose. As you pull down for the inner ears. And then um, the neck, the shoulders, digging in with your fingertips for the shoulder muscle ridge. Ooh. And then let's do the arms. Let's start with the armpit, lots of lymph nodes in here. The bicep, the forearm, the hand, the fingers, and then the other arm. The bicep, the forearm, the fingers, and even the webbing between the thumb and forefinger with your thumbnail. And your torso, the chest, the abdomen, and your back with your fist as high as you can anyways. Now let's do the legs. Um, there's a pressure point you can find in your buttock with your big knuckle, maybe. It's a real zinger when you do find it. And then work your way up your thigh with your palms, and then the knee, top side and bottom side, and then the calf pushing up with your thumbs, and then the outer shin digging out the fingernails all the way down. And then over your ankle. Now bring up your other knee. Put your foot on the thigh there. Over your foot. And then pull on the little toe. And pull on each toe up to the big toe. And massage the big toe. First joint, middle, the bottom side, tip of the big toe. And then grab onto all the toes with an inhale. And bend them backward. And then exhale. Bend them forward. And then inhale. And then with the thumbs, you massage the base of the toes up underneath there and down the bottom side of the foot. Keep breathing. Find the sore spots with your thumbs. And then the top side of your foot between the bones of the fingertips. And then the Achilles tendon, pinching the skin at the heel. And then wipe the whole foot off. And let's do the other leg. So let's start with that, oh, that buttock, that major sciatic nerve and tendons in there with your knuckle. And then uh, work your way up your thigh. And then your knee. And then bring up the other knee. And, uh, oh, we didn't do the calf, the underside of the calf, the thumbs, the outer shin with your fingertips, digging in over the ankle, over the foot, and pulling on each toe up to the big toe. Massage the big toe, 
Lots of important pressure points. Grab onto all the toes with the inhale. Exhale, bending them the other way. And then with the thumbs, massage the underside of the toes and down the bottom side of the foot. Keep breathing, find the sore spots. And then the top side of the foot between the bones and the fingertips and the webbing. And then that Achilles tendon, pinching the skin at the heel and wipe the whole foot off. Now, when you're doing this in a live class, we usually do it all laying down. So everyone's not looking at each other, standing up, uh, sitting up the way we are now. You can just do the whole thing laying down and people are less self-conscious. We just finished the massage and now the deep relaxation pose. So it's lay flat. <clears throat> now, uh, let's bring up the forearms though, because our hands just vacuumed all that stress out of our bodies and do some wrist rolls around and around both directions. And then finger bends, and then really shake them up. Get all that tension out of the hands now. And then let gravity take your arms, let them just drop with gravity, palms up at the sides. And you can let your legs just drop a couple inches with gravity. So there's nothing left. You're so relaxed now. You close your eyes and take a nice deep breath and let it all go. You're so relaxed. You're so light. It's like you're just floating on the gentle waves of your breath in a beautiful place in nature somewhere. Just floating on waves of relaxation coming from the tips of your toes, up through your ankles, up through your knees, up through your pelvis, up through your abdomen, up through your chest, from your fingertips, up to your wrists, up your elbows, up to your shoulders, up to your neck, up to your head the point between the eyebrows and just watching the waves of your breath flowing in and out. Deep relaxation. So relaxed. If you want, you can imagine the mind leaving the body from this point and going up and above, looking down at your body. Like a gift that was given to you this lifetime to expand your mind, to expand your heart, to expand your spirit. Now in the advanced class, you could do something more here. You take the mind to the navel, and imagine your breath flowing in and out of that point, breathing in life force and vitality and exhaling all your fears, irritability, and melancholy. Let it go. Breathing in that life force and vitality. You can bring your mind to the gate to the heart, to the sternum, breathing in intuition. And exhaling all your anxieties and worries and vanities, leaving in the higher guidance and wisdom. And exhaling all of your mental complexes and worries. You can take your mind to the throat and leaving in the ability to be great, noble, and selfless beings. And exhaling all the misuses of your voice, no more. And you can take your mind back to the point between the eyebrows. With each breath, let go of the little ego mind. Each breath, you have a much more to use. Well, let's take a nice deep breath now. Bring up the left knee, wake up, and roll all the way over to your right side. With your left hand, you push yourself up onto your right elbow and come on up sitting. I'm sorry I talk so much during that deep relaxation pose, but this is really recorded for others to learn. Um, now, after we did the warm ups, the asanas, 
a massage and a deep relaxation pose. Now the yoga exercise for the mind is meditation. And this is what yoga is all about. The word yoga means union, it's inner union. So let's try to do some meditation now. It should be a lot easier for our restless minds because we got so much stress out. You wanna sit cross-legged. For many people, it helps to put a cushion underneath your bottom so your legs are lower and it helps you keep your spinal column really straight, which is what you want in meditation. Or if you're a, a little bit better at it, you can sit in the half lotus. The left foot is up on the right calf or full lotus, but you don't want to do it if it's not comfortable because you don't want to be bothered by your body in the meditation. And then the palms are up in your lap. I like to isolate the two index fingers, the eagle fingers, and the palms up in your lap like this. You can touch the thumbs or not. Some people prefer open and upward palms up or out on your knees. And then the lower back flattens out. So that means your navel goes in. And you're kind of back on your sit bones a little bit. So you want a straight spinal column. So the navel goes in, flatten that curve out. Shoulders go down. The head kind of goes back and up. It's really straight and balanced. And even the tongue is curled back up and inwards, touching the roof of the mouth, pointing backwards. You close your eyes and watch the waves of your breath. Now, you might be straight, but you might be a little rigid right now. And we don't want to be. That's why we want to be fluid. So if the wind of your breath can sway the, the tree of your spine to the sides and to the front, the wind of your breath is swaying your mast, the tree of your spinal column, to the front and to the sides. Can you come back to the very center of gravity? Very straight, very balanced as if a straight white line that's going from the very center of the earth all the way up into your tailbone, up through the center of your spinal column and out the top of your head, out through the atmosphere and over the planet and over our solar system and over our 100 billion star galaxies, this vast universe all around you. And everything in the entire universe Everything in the world around you is vibrating waves that are coming to your body. Layers of waves coming to your five senses. Waves of color and light, waves of movement, waves of sound, all coming from one force, one source, one consciousness. All Even the electrons of your body are vibrating waves of mostly space. And more than this body, it's all one source that's sustaining all of life and keeping your own heart beating. And more than these emotions, it's all one consciousness that's deep in the intuitional layers of your mind. Always watching. It's with you, always guiding you above the restless waves of your thoughts. It's this inner, higher being. That inner loving presence that's always there. Now, the ancient name or mantra you can use for this inner loving presence is you mind above the waves of your thoughts. It's Baba. Baba Nam, Nam means the one to identify with, and Kevala, only, only Baba. I keep my mind focused on this breath, on this mantra. Baba, Kevala. And you can use this mantra to keep your mind focused, or you can use your own mantra. Feel that inner love. It's like going home to this higher one with each breath. 
keeping the mind focused. Let the restless thoughts go with each exhale. Sincere effort with each breath to keep the mind focused. Soul to its source. And you should smile because you're never alone. This higher inner loving presence, this higher guide is always there in your intuition. And to finish meditation, that was a short one. That was only five, 10 minutes. But on your own, you should try to meditate for 21 minutes or so. Let's uh, finish with the, bring your palms up at your heart. You offer everything that separates you from feeling an inner one all the time. So let go into your hands all of your physical attachments, like colorful petals flower petals, and you let go of all your, all your restless thoughts, all your worries, all your fears, all your emotions, all your past, all your traumas, and your ego, and your love, you just offer, just give it all back. And that's called puja, how to end the meditation. So, as I said earlier, the word yoga actually means union. And it's referring to this, something really great inside that we rarely experience because we're so extroverted, so restless mind, brain waves, and... Um, looking for love and happiness outside, which is always a balance of pain and pleasure, joy and sorrow, but inside, the mind can actually have an inner union. It's in all religions, all cultures, um, Satori, Nirvana, Samadhi, ecstatic union. Um, and it's awesome. We got lots of examples in history. It's a scientific system of practices morning and evening for your body your mind and your spirit is what yoga is that scientific system uh, from thousands of years of practicing um, so uh, try to practice on your own early in the morning when you First thoughts when you wake up, go to the bathroom, do some half bath, cool yourself down or full bath, and then do some yoga, do some meditation. Use the mantra. We each have our own personal inner connection with the nucleus of the universe, but we rarely experience it because we're so busy looking for that. Uh, we're just so externalized. So that's, and then uh, in the evening before dinner, and or before you go to sleep at night, the last thoughts you have. And you'll become calmer. You'll become more intuitive. You'll become happy and healthy in so many ways. <laughs>